Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the theory behind creating modular environments and constructing different layers of detail. We'll go over how to make sure the parts fit together easily, the purposes between the different layers, the ideal distribution of detail, and how to use details for the purpose of storytelling to enhance the immersive realism of the scene. Just to note, we won't be talking about tile set construction for video games. If you're interested in knowing more about that, then I have already talked about this in a previous series on the channel called Building a Sci-Fi Corridor with Blender and Unity. To demonstrate the content of today's video, I've been making a few different demonstration scenes that you might have seen on my social media channels if you're following me. As usual, you can get a copy of these resources from the link in the description, but today there is both a free and a paid version of the package for you to get your hands on. The free version will include a simplified scene that will illustrate the main points of theory we discuss, whereas the paid version will include all of my comprehensive artwork that you will see throughout the video. These are detailed scenes, the results of which have been posted on my art station. Both versions can be downloaded by using the links in the video description. So let's begin. When I say the phrase modular design, what I'm essentially talking about is a way of producing content where individual modules that are designed to snap together in predictable ways are created, which can then be combined to create even more complex structures. Individual modules can be swapped out for others to create alternate variations of the structure, and as you can imagine, this is really useful for simplifying the process of level design or randomly generated environments. It's quite common practice with hard surface environment design for modules or segments to be constructed in cubic or rectangular shapes. For example, if you know that all your modules are 2 by 2 by 2 meters, then it's easy to snap them together by just incrementing by a value of 2 on the appropriate axis. A benefit of using cubic structures is that they're so easy to put together. You know that no matter how many strange diverting branches you build, the structure can always come back around and perfectly reconnect with itself. By creating different ways that the modules can fit together, we can change the amount of space shed between the pieces, meaning you can easily transition from a corridor to a large open room by using the appropriate types of connecting pieces. When it comes to building modules, we want to be able to maintain some variability. There are two main ways we can approach this. Adding details just to look good and fill up the space, or layering the details so that the different layers can be easily replaced with alternative layouts, just like the modules as a whole. You can think of this as nested modularity. When thinking of different layers of detail, it helps to simplify them into three main categories, which are primary, secondary, and tertiary. But even with a decent number of variable pieces to swap out, random detail for the sake of detail doesn't assist with storytelling in any way. Sure, highly detailed artworks can definitely look very cool, but you've got to make a decision based on the context of your creation. Are you trying to tell a story with your work, or are you trying to demonstrate how much detail you can push into your artwork? To give the environment purpose, the different layers of detail should contribute to the story in a way that's easy for the viewer to interpret. To act as a basic guide, primary details can be used for structural elements, secondary details can be used for functionality, and tertiary details can be used for additive elements that tell a story. For example, equipment that's been thrown across the floor, a blood stain, smoke, or fire that implies something has taken place in the world. Of course, there's no requirement to follow this construct of primary, secondary, and tertiary layers, but if you're having trouble making your own content, then it's a good way to help visualize how to compose your assets. Having a story already laid out in your mind should also help if you don't know what kind of details you should be adding. But talking about the free layer construct, this brings us onto the subject of the distribution of detail. It's important to have areas of large, medium, and small shapes to create a balance that is pleasing to the eye. Gleb Alexandrov did a really good talk about this at the Blender conference in 2017, in a talk called The Secret of Making High Quality Art. Inside of it, he references an amazing article by Neil Blevins about the ideal distribution of primary, secondary, and tertiary shapes. This is something that I think every artist should be aware of. I've seen many people fall into a trap when they start making art, where they believe that just adding more and more detail means that their artwork will automatically become better. It's the same trap that people fall into when they first discover kit bashing or photo bashing. In reality, a balance between details and a careful measurement of the purpose behind those details is what really lends value to a concept. When strictly working within the size restriction of a single module, we make it easier to build new structures using those objects, but at the same time, if the viewer can easily identify the seams between the modules, then it can break the immersion of the environment. A way to counteract this is to add final details that are specific to the scene and disregard the traditional boundaries of individual modules. For example, with one of my demonstration scenes here, notice how there is piping which spans the entire length of the corridor, but changes direction briefly after a few cells. Instead of having an obvious hard surface point for snapping together, these objects have a more organic flow, which weave above and around the original modular detail pieces. Consequently, these details would need to be added last in the design process because they respond to the details that were laid before. 
So knowing when to break repetition is important in selling a feeling of immersive realism, not to be confused with photorealism. YouTuber Asher Isbrooker did a nice video titled The Immersive Realism of Studio Ghibli, where they talked about their admiration for the work of the animation studio. In it they share a few quotes from Miyazaki, co-founder of the studio. One quote in particular sums up immersive realism quite well. Even if the world depicted is a lie, the trick is to make it seem as real as possible. Stated another way, the animator, or artist in our case, must fabricate a lie that seems so real that viewers will think the world depicted might possibly exist. This is why adding clues for storytelling is important, regardless of the visual style. If you're not sure what kinds of details to add, then here are some ideas. Signage. The real world is full of language and symbology. Add it to your work where appropriate, even if the content is completely fictional in nature. Words and symbols can often convey a lot of meaning while only taking very little visual space. Asymmetry. The world is rarely perfectly symmetrical, and humans will instinctively know when an environment is too perfect to feel normal. Even in nature, organisms that look perfectly symmetrical on the macroscopic scale will often have a certain degree of asymmetry on the microscopic level. Light sources. Areas of high contrast will draw the eye of the viewer. You can use this to your advantage to draw the eye to key story elements. Perhaps these story elements could also be light sources themselves. For example, a glow stick or a torch that's been dropped on the ground. Ask yourself questions to push it further. Is there anything surrounding this object? Why was it dropped? And who dropped it? Can we provide clues to those answers in the artwork? One thing I like to see when people are creating concept art is when they create different versions of the same environment under different conditions, like a day and a night version, or a clean and a destroyed version. Doing so shows a good understanding of the core structure, and how to adjust the detailing to tell a different story. I think doing this is a valuable exercise for anyone that's interested in doing environment work or level design. Modular design will simplify this rapid concepting process, because pieces can be easily replaced and recycled. Okay, before we close this video up, I want to talk a bit about the post-processing behind the renders of my demonstration scenes. A really cool video was put out recently by this user who I'm not going to try and pronounce because I will definitely get it wrong. Their video, How to Get That Space Look, included a nice little trick for glow and light balance changes to give a similar kind of outer space lighting effect to what we've seen recently scattered throughout the art community. I have used this technique in the demonstration files, and afterwards I've taken the images into Affinity Designer, added some extra vibrancy, and played around with the brightness and contrast. Also, we've got some extra news. Blender 2.82 has been released, and along with it comes a bunch of improvements. If you would like a good overview of the new features, then Sub and Shotty, one of the other members of the Blender Nest podcast, has been kind enough to make a video talking about them. You can also watch my recent interview with CG Boost. We talk about what it's like making a living as a 3D artist on YouTube. As well as this, episode 4 of the Blender Nest podcast is now available to watch or listen to. In it, we talk about whether it's worthwhile starting a YouTube channel. Alright, that will do it for this video. Make sure to pick up a copy of the resources by using the links below. All of your support is highly appreciated, and I want to give a massive thanks to everyone who has been leaving tips on the packages. Without them, I would not be able to keep producing this kind of content. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Make sure to enable notifications, and follow me on social media to stay updated when I release new content. If you want to share your work and get sneak previews of upcoming content, then feel free to join our Discord server by using the link in the description. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.